probably the best way I can describe it is this, if this helps you. When we think about our heroes, military heroes, we forget that those military heroes killed a lot of people in the course of their their actions. But there's a difference between our military heroes, I mean, George Washington, there you go. George Washington could never do wrong, right? Well, George Washington did a lot of wrong. And if you ask the Canadians or the British, they'll tell you some of the bad things that George Washington did. But one of the things he did was he wiped out a lot of natives. In the native, I mean, a lot of natives were killed under his rule. Uh, natives at First Nations. George Washington wasn't claiming to be the prophet of God either. And so therein lies the difference. So we've got someone that's doing this in the name of, of Allah. And uh, anyway, does that help? So I'm going to go through back to my forum here, or back to my presentation. Now, one of the things I said here, now I've, I've been working on the paper, so I've not, I've completely abandoned this presentation, but I've kind of helping me remind me. The things that I want us to understand, and this is the most critical thing in our understanding and dealing with Muslims, and I cannot stress it enough, cannot stress it enough. Uh, we have to think about who, who Jesus was. So it is our belief that somehow the Messiahship of Christ involved God entering our world. This is very difficult for Muslims. But if that conviction is true, what we understand about the Lord that we serve is a deep, deep love for humanity. And it's, and it's not a particular humanity, a deep love for his creation. This is what we believe. And that was manifest in Jesus Christ. So when Jesus came into our world, he shared our humanity. So this is the rule, that, this is the takeaway theological lesson for everyone, okay, that I alluded to before. It's very critical when you're dealing with Muslims. We can talk about our theological differences, and they're important, but it's when you, when you get into this realm of respecting them for who they are, um, appreciating them for who they are. Do you know how many unbelievably noble Muslims there are in the world? There's a lot of noble Muslims. I was going to show you a clip of some of the people in Syria. We can't imagine what they're dealing with. They basically feel forsaken. There's probably a good question, a, good, a very good question, as to why they got stuck in this middle ground between the US, Iran, Russia, and all these power plays, and they're right in the middle of it. And, um, for us to negate, for us to negate as Christians in our little Western world, to negate the realities of the political situation, how they see Israel, their, their understanding of Israel. Most people don't have any idea of their side of the story on Israel. But if you heard their side on the story, you might think about it a little differently. They're not out in left field with some of their concerns. In a word, the West has never trusted the Islamic world. The West has oppressed the Islamic world. In World War I, we divided them very specifically to make sure that there was no power. And guess what's happening in Syria today? Does anybody know? All of those tribal issues are coming right back up. The Kurds, the Armenians, you keep hear hearing about the Kurds, right? All that goes back to World War I. We were making sure, not us, but France, Britain at the time, that these people did not have power. There was, it was divide and conquer. Now, just stop, stop and just think about that a second. Okay, just think about that a second. What is their perspective of who we are? Now, I'm a godly Muslim. I'm a godly Muslim. And there are a lot of good Muslims in the world. And when I say that, I mean it. Sometimes, 
they're better Christians in their attributes than we are. And I know, because I've seen it time and time again. Well, why is that? Why is it that they're so... Because they pray five times a day, and we come from a culture that is secular. Weak, and so the way that they view the world of Christianity is through our secular world. And everyone knows... Do you know what, do you know what, um, during the Iran crisis, does everyone know who Ayatollah Khomeini is? Does anyone know? Okay, so, the, so the, uh, the, uh, the Americans had gone in. This is the history. This is one of many histories. They had overthrown Mossadegh, the previous leader of Iran, through the CIA coup. How many know this? Raise your hand if you have, if this makes any sense to you. They'd overthrown him. Very, and he was essentially democratically elected, and it had to do with oil. It had to do with power. Okay, it did. He was threatening to to nationalize the uh, the uh, gas companies there, and they would. And um, it, it's much more complicated than what I'm about to say. But I'm giving you the the leftist view on this. You need to hear it because I guarantee you that's what they're thinking. There's many other things they're thinking, like that 9-11 was probably done by the U.S. The majority of Muslims in the world believe that. Okay? Majority of Muslims. And, and, and if you understand the way that they think, you would understand why they really believe it. Now, the U.S. goes in. They put in the Shah. It gets to the point where the Iranians are being so secularized that they, they're like, we're losing our culture. Ayatollah Khomeini's in Paris. He's writing. And, and, and there's the overthrow. There's the hostages are taken and the U.S. is thrown out. And they put in the, the, their Islamic regime, which stands today. A militant, uh, fundamentalist Shia Islamic regime, which Ali can tell you a lot about because he's from there. Um, and, and there's a lot of human rights violations because guess what's in power? Islam. So people get hurt. People get killed. All kinds of stuff goes on in the name of Sharia law. So that's the other side of it. Now, I wanted to say something in all this. What's happening in Iran now? Well, what's happening in Iran now is happening everywhere in the Muslim world. Iran is a post-Islamic state. There, a lot of people in Iran don't believe in Islam. And the reason they don't believe in Islam is because they've seen it for what it is. They've seen it for what it is. And uh, I was talking to you about Ayatollah Khomeini. This is what Ayatollah Khomeini said. And one, somebody had a question over here, so I'm addressing it now about how, uh, how come, you know, whatever, why are they nice and whatnot. Ayatollah Khomeini sat down with these Americans after the hostages were taken. These American Christians came over, met with him. He met with them, and he told them this. He said, go back to your American Christian friends and tell them this. If they would follow Jesus, if American Christians would follow Jesus there would be no problems between Iran and the U.S. Now, that's a loaded question. Somebody's rolling his eyes over here. Yeah, who, what version of Jesus is he talking about? He's talking about the Muslim version, probably. But if we put up a wall and say, oh, that's the Ayatollah Khomeini, he's from the devil, blah, 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 we're probably not, we're probably missing something. Do, do you guys get what he's trying to tell us? Does everybody see what, what's going on here? That, that expresses where a lot of Muslims in the world are at. And you know what? I don't blame them. I don't blame them at all. I don't blame them at all. I mean, look at pornography in our culture. Look at how it's a given when you go to college that you have to get drunk and act like a prostitute or, or who knows what. I mean, this is our secular culture. This is where we're at. 
It has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It has nothing to do with with God. And so, right now, you know, in Canada, um, you can mock God. It's okay to mock God. You could never do that in most Muslim countries. Just couldn't ha- wouldn't happen. So, what we find is that there is something shared there. And what we see is that they're very, very godly, believe in one God, pray five times a day. You get theologians like Miroslav Volf from Princeton, who's an evangelical, who says, well, we believe the same God. Well, as Rob said, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, and even Robert, even he, he uh, debated Nabil Koresh. Did you see that? Okay, he, he debated Nabil Koresh. I don't think we serve the same God. But in some ways, yes, we do. So I was talking to an African believer just a couple days ago at Tyndale, very big pastor in Africa. And he said, you know, uh, we, we see that there is some respect here. We do have something in common here. Uh, they pray, and, there's, and we see that, and there is a bridge there. And when you, when you live... Now, here's what you need to hear. I'm skipping all this good stuff, aren't I? You're missing that. This is... If the church would start getting around Christians and befriending Christ, and, and Muslims and getting involved in their life, I promise you things would happen. And you know what? They want to hear... They want to be our friends. They want to be our friends. Um, I'm kind of skipping over some stuff here. So um, become acquainted with who they are. Uh, does anybody know who the two uh, largest Muslim countries in the world are? I know probably Indonesia is one. Second? No, no, uh, Muslims. Number one, Indonesia. Number two, India. No, India is a Hindu country. Well, yes, it is. Yes, it is, but India is that big. Number three, anybody know? That's right. Pakistan. What did Pakistan used to be? India. Yeah. Um... That doesn't quite fit in our way of thinking, does it? And and uh, and so <clears throat> we're talking about a very complex faith here. There's folk Islam, where there's a lot of mix. Uh, what do Muslims really believe? Well, they can believe anything as long as they can recite the Rashad uh, Shahada. Uh, they could be a little new age. They, there's a big, big push in places like Iran right now for universalism, Sufi Islam. Am I right, Ali? They, you know, we're all one. We, and, and, and there's a lot of, because there's a lot of people, please come in, sir. You're welcome. Uh, there's a lot of people that, that, that are really genuine. Uh, about their desire for peace. Okay? There's only one problem with that. Am I losing anybody so far? 